Now we have a presentation by Mr. Kenneth Scarrett. It's about a recent expedition to acquire and characterize natural pearls from Australian Pinktara Maxima. Oh, so here I am again. Um, I, uh, it's very interesting um, listening to everyone talk about Barini pearls and being able to identify Barini pearls, etc. There's some fantastic presentations. Um, but you can't learn to identify Bahraini pearls as Bahraini pearls or Gulf pearls unless you know something about other pearls around the world. So one of the um, uh, enterprises that Danat undertook, um, uh, I guess it's uh, getting on for a year ago now, um, was an expedition to um, Australia to collect uh, natural pearls um, from Pinktada Maxima from two different um, areas in the north and west of Australia. Um, not uh, sort of north of Darwin, but I'll come to that. Um, we, I don't know why that's so bright. Um, the, uh, I just want to highlight a few of the wonderful team in, in, uh, in um, in uh, uh, Dunat, most of them are sitting over there. Stand up, please. Stand up. Come on, ladies. Stand up. Stand up. Take a bow. Because, you know, thank you so much. You know, uh, much of what we do um, and organize and, 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 and try to get right all depends on people like that to actually do the work and, and get the job done. There's a lot of work to do. Um, so just to, so that people, if people aren't aware of this, um, natural pearls have been found on the western and northern coasts of Australia um, since uh, around 1868. Clearly that's not um, the sort of several thousand years of the Bahraini situation. But they have been there, and they are um, uh, um, still there today. A lot of people think, again, overfishing, etc., as they think about overfishing in, in, in the Gulf. Um, but um, there's extremely good management of, of Pinktada Maxima around, around Australia. Um, so the the other thing to think about here is, and it's actually important in this trip as well, is that the, um, the pearling industry in Australia, um, the pearls were not the most important thing. Two other things came first. I'm talking natural pearls by Australia. This is pre-culturing in Australia. Um, the, the, the two most important things were not, uh, were, were, sorry, Pearls were not the most important things. The two most important things were the shell and the pearl meat, both of which were very, very saleable in these areas. Just practice, I know. And this, this is the type of shell we're talking about. So this is, um, you can see there's this, this a tremendous difference between the Pinktada radiata that we've been talking about for the most part and the Pinktada maxima here in terms of the wild shell. And you can see the, the real size of the thing there. So between the 16th and 22nd of October in 2018, two, two members of uh, the Danat uh, gemological team, um, can I go back? I, I, I charge for that. Are you sure you want to pay? Right. T ten dina? Okay. Everybody loves that picture. Um, it, it's a standard. You can download it. It's on the, it's on the web somewhere. Um, but it's a, it's, it's a really... Actually, it, it comes... Uh, I think in one of the museums in Western Australia has it uh, under copyright. Uh, well, you'll see in a minute. Yes. Um, the thing, the thing that I'm, I'm talking about here, don't mix up two things. Um, when, you're, when you're culturing uh, Pinktada Maxima, the shells are not this big. 
Here we're talking about absolutely wild shell that have been allowed to grow in, in very deep ocean water. Um, go back again. Okay. Um, so, uh, where are we? Yes. Uh, during this period um, that the guys were on the, uh, on the ship, uh, 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 there were 10 drift, drift dives a day. Um, um, uh, okay, uh, while, while, uh, while the main purpose of the, the actual ships was to collect the um, shell and the pearl meat, our team were there to collect the pearls. And this had been largely ignored for a very, very long time. Just uh, for, if you're not aware of what drift diving is, we're, we're really out on, out on the ocean here. So it's a fairly large ship. We have a couple of booms outside there. And from the booms, you have the airlines and the tow ropes running down below. I guess this doesn't go fast enough for my liking. So and down below under the water, the diver is being dragged along at a very slow pace on the seabed. And he's being dragged along and as he, he finds the, the, the maxima, puts them into his, um, into his sack. And that sack, because sometimes it's very deep depths, that sack goes up, not straight to the surface. There's an, a holding area below the surface where those, uh, where those um, nets are kept until the final drift and they bring them all aboard. So here's, here's what we wanted to achieve out of this. Clarity on where within Pinktada Maxima body the pearls occur. Greater levels of certainty when uh, determining the natural versus cultured nature of the unknown. Whoops. And the potential of identifying from which mollusk a particular natural pearl was produced. There were our th three main um, desires um, prior to going on the trip. Really doesn't want to. Okay. So the following slides um, uh, briefly describe about 50 of the pearls that we've randomly selected uh, from those that were, co that were collected. And I'm hoping at some stage a full paper will be, of the results will be published in the months, uh, the months, or maybe the years to come. There's a lot of work to do. So the, the two grounds that we're looking at um, were the northwestern grounds, sort of as you can see, that's sort of slightly north and west of Darwin. And the northeastern grounds, again, north and west of Darwin. So that sh the ship that you saw there was sailing the waters there and literally trawling backwards and forwards, picking up the, the, the mollusks. Um, these are just uh, four images to show you what, what, what like the divers look like and the size of, their, of the nets that they, they were taking down with them uh, to collect these, uh, these maxima. And, and this bottom slide here is an interesting slide. Um, I do have a video of this, but uh, it's, it's easier just to show the, the still at the moment. As the, sacks are the nets are coming up, the, the shells are being emptied out. And if the shell is below a certain size, it gets thrown back into the water. And that's what's happening here. That guy there um, is throwing the shell back into the water that isn't big enough. Um, but you can see the, the size of the, the nets they're using there compared to the size of the nets that we're using in the Gulf to pick up uh, pink tartar radiata. There's a whole operation that goes on a board. 
So um, uh, there's Ali there. I think there's a pointer on here. Um, Ali up there on the top left, opening up shells. You can see the size of the shells that we are opening and finding pearls. This is the pearl meat here um, that is also kept and sold. So the total number of shells opened was 6,837 shells. The Danat, Dan, the Danat team alone opened 2,468. The number of natural pearls found was 793 natural pearls. Uh, the pearls were various shapes, size, and color. Some blister pearls were collected. Other mollusk shells were also observed in addition to the uh, pink tartar maxima. So when the guys went down there, they had a map of the mollusk. And basically, we were talking about mantle lip, mantle hinge, mantle central, the adductor muscle, and the mantle lip again, um, so that they could record where in the mollusk the, um, the pearls were coming from. So every bag that they had when they collected the pearls contained this mapping so that they can come back and um, show us where a particular pearl came from. I don't know why this is not. Okay, a few examples. Um, some uh, uh, quick examples of, wh of where the pearls were found. And believe me, there's a lot more than this. I'm just pulling out a few. Um, this is the adductor muscle. And if you look at the adductor muscle there on the lower edge of the adductor muscle, there's a whole mass of natural pearls actually inside the adductor muscle. If you read any textbooks on pearls and pearling around the world, you'll find this is never mentioned. Um, by the way, you will still, even with pink tartar radiata, you will find pearls in the adductor muscle. In the mantle lip, the mantle hinge. Um, also blister pearls, a lot of blister pearls we found. And here's an interesting one. This is a whole mass of blister pearls underneath the adductor muscle, in the adductor scar. And again there. Now, uh, someone was asking earlier on um, about the size of the shell from the first picture. You can see the measurements here. That's, that's uh, 17.3 centimeters by 17.50 centimeters. So that's the size of that, of that particular shell. And that was about normal for, the, for that trip. Um, and not, yeah, uh, we, we attempted to note where every pearl came from, but in some cases it just wasn't possible um, because Dan the Danat team were not opening every shell. The, 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 the dive team were opening all the rest. And they were not as fastidious, if you like, as the Danat team. And so a lot of other pearls were actually found in the, in the waste guts. Um, which we searched through later, like this. So he had a lot of waste guts, and they and we went through the waste guts, finding uh, the pearls in the waste guts. This is a, an, um, a um, uh, give you an idea of um, the, 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 the stats there. Um, from known locations within the mollusks, we had a 60%, and unknown locations, 40% of the pearls found. Um, if we looked at the uh, known locations, um, uh, we had the mantle hinge at uh, uh, 39%, mantle center uh, lip at uh, 10%, mantle lip, uh, can't see the colors here, 21%, and the adductor muscle, strangely enough, 
30% of the natural pearls found were actually found in the adductor muscle. So these slides, um, I'm going to start off with some slides that, that probably people will recognize and say, oh, what was the point in all of this um, in trying to, to determine the natural origin of these pearls? This is one of the pearls that was discovered. And top left there, you'll see where it was discovered in the, in, in the mollusk. Um, and the, on the top right, the, um, the, uh, the location of the, of the pearling ground, the, the shelling ground in which it was found. And you can see here a fairly standard natural pearl structure. Not much of a problem. Um, here's another one. Again, you can see where it was found both in terms of the, 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 the shelling grounds and the mantle lip, and you can see the structure there is not too difficult to understand for, for a natural pearl. And again here, not too difficult to understand for a natural pearl. Here we have one where the two pearls have come together, fairly nice natural structures in their growth structures. Um, you know, the wonderful thing about this is, now just repeat if people didn't quite understand it, these are 100% natural pearls. They're, they've been nowhere near any culturing operation. They're absolutely wild. So they're absolutely natural. Bear that in mind as we start to go through a few more of these slides. Here we have a conglomerate of, of natural pearls that have come together. This was, this was quite common. Um, there are some unusual things about this, this radiography um, in terms of some of the transparency where you may have some, some different forms of calcium carbonate involved, uh, particularly that last one, um, where we're thinking that there's a different form of calcium carbonate involved in that, that scenario, but it's still a fairly classic natural structure. Then we get into structures like this, which seem to be fairly unusual. And then we get something like this that throws us completely. So bear in mind, this is a completely natural pearl from an absolutely wild mollusk. And think about all the images you see in textbooks, etc. And there are two things that are problematic here. One is this very funny um, shape in the middle of the pearl which is really quite unusual. And the other is this uh, demarcation line going right the way around the outside. Now, uh, is Nick still here? I just thought, I'm showing you this for some fun. Where are you? Hey, where is he? He's hiding. Yeah. <laughs> so, you look at something like this, and Nick, as Nick was saying earlier on, it isn't always easy. Uh, sometimes there's a lot of debate and so on and so forth. But for this, we know it's 100% natural. However, you can look at that and interpret it in a bunch of different ways. You can say it's a, for, for example, an atypical bead cultured pearl from a non-bead cultured pearl. Maybe. So, uh, but it's not. It's 100% natural. Here, again, some very unusual structures that look like it should be a non bee culture, but it isn't, 100% natural. And again, a very, very similar situation. Again, so this is, is this again, and again, I'm just bringing out 50 samples that we actually looked at. There's another 850 samples that haven't been examined yet. So this just shows you some of the contradictory um, information that you have out there. If you look back at a paper I wrote, um, uh, I forget what year it was now, but uh, on, a similar, on a similar trip um, in, in Australia, and you look at the structures that I published there, where everyone was questioning what these structures were, and they're almost identical to those ones that I've just shown you. Here we have something very unusual found in the mantle lip. And here we have this nice white center that everyone keeps talking about. 
um, again in a natural pearl, um, this one found in the guts. And I guess this one will look, will throw everyone a little bit. Um, if one looks at that, uh, looks, if you look at the, the, um, the, the textbook scenario for a non bee cultured pearl, um, this is what it looks like. This is 100% natural um, from um, Pink Dada Maxima. And we can tell you exactly where it came from. This one came in the um, adductor muscle and it was found in the western um, fields. Top there is normal uh, x-ray imaging and the bottom three are CT. Um, one of the things that did come out of this, which we think, we think was that, I, sh I showed this earlier on to some extent, um, was that um, with, with uh, just looking at barium and, and manganese, you can actually separate out some of the mollusks with moderate certainty. So I'm just going to go fi finish up um, on, on this with a, a, couple of, a couple of slides which I really enjoy because I really feel that the internal world of pearls is just as exciting as any internal world of rubies, sapphires, or, or anything else. And very often, and the guys here will realize that we come across all sorts of fantastic things inside natural pearls. Yeah, apart from um, those things that you show that we can't identify, Nick, was it the rods and uh, whatever? Um, I'm talking about natural. And there's one of them I really love. It's a beautiful natural pearl. And another one here, beautiful natural pearl. So what, what are we doing here? We're, we, 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 the guys did a fantastic job in going down and finding this massive number of natural pearls over a very short space of time in Pink Tata Maxima. We've been able to catalog these, the structures, the chemistry, etc. And what, what, what do we do with that? We learn a lot that we, well, we learn, we, what we learn is a lot of the things we assume or think we might know um, over the years are not necessarily true. That we have to really think very clearly about what we're doing and basically we have to know what type of mollusk we're dealing with in terms of the pearl itself because it seems that the structures you'll see in uh, pearls from different mollusks will have different structures so structures from Pink Data Radiata will be just different from Pink Data Maxima etc and we need to take this into account thank you very much